everybody. In this video, we are going to talk about how to use Epic links within Seesaw so that your students can use those digital books or videos from Epic within a Seesaw activity. So here I have an example of an Epic activity uh, where I have the link out to this Epic book. The kids need to go to the link, read the book, then come in and add a response and add some notes, some fun facts on a note page I put on there and then submit that when they're done. So let me show you how I've created this type of assignment. The first thing I'm going to do before I go to create my assignment is I'm going to go to Epic in another tab and find material that I want to share with the students, whether it be a book, a video, an audiobook, you're just coming to grab the URL to that item from Epic. So if I pick the Creature Campers, any one of the stories here, and this is a story that I want the kids to read. So I'm going to grab the URL, Control C to copy that, and I'm going to head back over to Seesaw. You don't have to assign it to your class within Epic. You can if you want to, but it's not necessary. Go back to Seesaw. Go to Add Assign Activity. Create New. Name it. And here's where you're going to type in those directions that you want the kids to do um, when working with their Epic link. So you know, click on the link, go read the book, come back here, and then if you have a template for them set up to do something, you can add that in. The URL, we're going to go to Add Multiple Media Instructions Examples. We're going to click on Link. We're going to hit Control V to paste that link in, and either hit the green check or enter. It will go and find that link and load it into this page. Once it's loaded, although it doesn't look directly like the book, it will work. You also can record additional directions on top of this if you wish to. Click the green check mark. And now this gets loaded into the activity as the link for the students. You can add voice directions, which is always good to back up these directions. And then if you have a template that you want the kids to do um, as part of the assignment for reading this book, you can add that template here as well. And I'll show you an example of that in another one. And then you're just hitting save and that creates the activity for you. So now you see you have the link here. We can favorite it, we can assign it to our students. So once we've created it, now if you wanna test this, just click on it, it'll jump out. We're gonna hit assign and I'm gonna assign it to my test class. So when you get into the view, here is the activity. This is what it looks like. Um, if there are any additional directions, you would see them on, on the right-hand side here, kind of like I've done with this example down here. And then if you want to view this from a student perspective, click Add Response, use your sample student, and this is going to allow you to see what the kids do. So they're going to have to click View Instruction to see and click on that link. Now, they will see that in the regular activity as well, so they can just do that first. Um, but if they forget, they can come here, click on that link. Now, from a student side of things, if I click on this as a student, it's going to take me to Epic. It's going to take me to the book. In order to start reading the book, and the kids only have to do this the first time, they're going to go to log in. Student and educator. And you're going to have to give them your class code. They'll enter the class code one time. After that, it'll save their login. Or as you can see on here, it saves my class code. So they can either enter it, click on it, and after this, it remembers who they are. Then they're going to find their name, click on it. Again, the first time they have to do this 
if you set them a password, put that in. Let me pick one that doesn't have one. It will log them in and then take them to that activity. After this, they will not have to do that. So here is that uh, Sammy Lux out activity and they can read through the book. And when they're done, they go back over to Seesaw. And if there's any activity they have to do, they can click on the document to finish their activity. And that's kind of how you working with Epic. So let me show you a different one now that I've logged in as a student once into Epic. So if I go down to the squid one, so this is what it looks like. So instead of clicking add a response first, um, and I read the directions here, click on the Epic link about squid. So I'm gonna click the link directly from the activity. And this is gonna take me in. Now notice, I didn't have to sign in this time because I already did it once. So the kids only have to do it one time and that's gonna remember their information for them. Now I can read my book about squids. When I'm done with my book about squids and I close this tab, now I can see after reading, I'm gonna click on add a response. And now because this one's set up, I'm gonna pick my sample student. And here is the template that I put in here for the kids. So this is a note template, write three fun facts. So the kids just have to click on this and type their answers. Now the other piece that I've added in here are some audio directions for the students as well. So if I click this, it tells them what this says and it says, you know, click next to the number one so that you can type your answers and then they can continue on from there. When they're done, they're going to click the green check mark and that will submit their work that's tied to that activity. And it shows up in their feed. So that's how you can use Epic and Seesaw together. Thanks for watching. Hope everyone has a great day.